Okay, boys and girls, here we go. Let's continue our discussion on what this thing is called a determinant of a square matrix. Now remember, we talked about this in class very briefly, but a two by two matrix, when we find the determinant, we'll do a little review here, but as we remember, what we talk about with determinants is this, associated with each square matrix. Remember, this is important, it has to be a square matrix. We can't find a determinant of a matrix if it's not a square matrix. So rows and columns have to be exactly the same. 2 by 2, 3 by 3, 8 by 8, 20 by 20, whatever. So a square matrix is a real number that we call this thing called a determinant. Now remember, this is a matrix right here, phenomenal. We have three ways that you're going to denote determinant. It might say DET and then the actual matrix B. You might have these little things that we remember them as absolute value symbols, but we're talking about matrix now, so it means something different. So that symbol right there might be around the matrix. Or you just might put the little straight little symbols in the numbers. So that all means determinant. And remember, the first thing we do is we always start at row one, column one. So the top left corner, that entry spot right there, row one, column one is where we always start. And we multiply downhill first. So it's the easy one. We're going downhill. We coast downhill. That's the easy start. We coast. We ease into it. We coast. We coast it. Downhill first. So negative 2 times 6. Whoops, sorry. Negative 2 times 6, which gives you this right here. And then we go uphill. We start down here at the bottom. And we go uphill and multiply those guys. 5 times negative 7. And remember, the key thing is always this. When we go downhill, there is a difference from going uphill. That's why there's a difference right there. So there's downhill, whoop, and then we go uphill, whoo. So when you multiply negative 2 and 6, it's negative 12. 5 and negative 7 is negative 35. Negative 12 minus negative 35 changes to a plus. So 23 is your final answer for the determinant for this one. So that is a 2 by 2, just a quick review. That kind of rhymed, whoo. Okay, let's go to a 3 by 3. All right, how do you find the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. Well, here you go. Here's a 3 by 3 example. Well, here is number 1. You see the example right here. Sorry, not number 1. But the example is 5, negative 8, 4, 4, 2, 1, 1, 1, negative 5. So it is a 3 by 3, a wonderful square matrix, so we can find the determinant. And you're going to do the same process as we did in class by a 2 by 2, but you've got to do a little bit more work with it. You'll see. So step number one is this. Before you do anything, when we talk, when it's asking for determinant, you must rewrite the first two columns of the matrix to the right of the actual matrix itself. This is just really setting the stage for what you're going to do before we even multiply and do any of this craziness. So, as you see here, I transposed the example down here. Look up there if you're not sure the numbers. So what I did is I took the first two columns, the 5, 4, 1, negative 8, 2, 1, and I wrote those over here to the right, you can see it. So once I do that, then that sets the stage for what I'm actually going to do when I find this determinant. So really step number two, as I just told you, it's easier to coast downhill first, so that's where we start. You always start at row one, column one, that entry, and you multiply downhill. Now you actually have to do this three times, you can see it from my lines on here. But you start here, and you multiply downhill diagonally. So 5 times 2 times 5 is that spot right there. And then you're going to add that to the next downhill spot. So go over to the right. So it's row 1, column 2, that entry right there. We start there and we go downhill. So negative 8 times 1 times 1 whoop, gives me that right there. And then we go over one more spot. So you're exhausting all of the actual spots on the top row, multiplying downhill. So I take 4 times 4 times 1. That gives me this entry right there. And as you see, I group all of this stuff together, all the stuff in blue. All the downhill stuff is all grouped together. And then we go to step three. Well, then I must multiply uphill by starting at row three, column one. So just like a two by two, I start at the top left. Then the second round, I start at the bottom, the bottom left. And I multiply uphill. So I go one times two times four, right there. And then I go to the next entry over here in this column, or in the row, sorry. I go 1 times 1 times 5, beep, right there. And then I do the last one, 5 times 4 times negative 8, beep, right there. Wonderful. And of course you see, this is important, extremely important, I hope you write this down as a note, you've got to group those things together. So the stuff in blue is grouped all together with the downhill multiplication. 
And then the stuff in black right there, that's all grouped together as the uphill multiplication. So that's the idea. So now I just got to simplify this bad boy. There is one more thing that we're missing. I don't have it up here yet. I'm holding it for dramatic effect. We'll see. So when I do this, 5 times 2 times 5 gives me 50. Negative 8, 1, 1 gives me negative 8. 4, 4, 1 gives me 16. I put that all together, that gives me 58. Phenomenal. So over here, when I multiply all this stuff together, do my order of operations, of course in parentheses first, 1, 2, 4 gives me an 8. 1, 1, 5 gives me a 5. 5 times 4 times negative 8 gives me negative 160. Punch those bad boys together, which gives me negative 147. Phenomenal. Well, I am not done yet. I am pretty close, though. This is my last step. Just like we did in the 2x2. Two two. What do you think goes between here? Oh, yes. Remember, there is a difference. Hmm. There is a difference between multiplying downhill and multiplying uphill. So you have to find the difference of those two things. So it's difference. It is difference right here. So it's 58 subtract away negative 147. So when I do that, it's 58 really plus 147. And 58 plus 147 is, the last I checked, 205. Woo! There's your answer, 205. That is phenomenal. So let me slide this thing across. There's your example. Now this one, there is absolutely no work done whatsoever on it. So my suggestion, pause the video and do it. Go back to the video and look at the steps of what we just did with that example and now find the determinant of this 3x3 three three matrix. Pause the video and good luck. Let's see if you got it right boys and girls. I believe that you did. First step is to do this. You're going to, to the right of this matrix, rewrite the first two columns. So I'll put a 1, a 4, and a 6, and then a 2, a 0, and a 2. So that is step number 1, if we will. So the first thing now that we do, not the first thing, the next thing, is we must start at this spot right here. Bingo! Row 1, column 1. And what I do is I multiply downhill. So I multiply 1, times 0 times 1, which I'll put that right up here. 1 times 0 times 1. And then I got to go 2 times 1 times 6. Well, that's a nice line. <laughs> so I go plus 2 times 1 times 6. Lovely. And then I got to multiply this one. 1 times 4 times 2. Lovely. Whoops, I'm messing up here. It's okay. So I got 1 times 4 times 2. Sweetness. So that's the downhill part of my determinant that I'm finding. So when I actually, let's do this. Let's group this together. So I'll put this over here. So this number that I'm going to get is going to be 1 times 0 times 1. Well, that's 0. I'm going to get 2 times 1 times 6, which is actually a 12. And I'm going to get 1 times 4 times 2, which is 8. So this whole downhill part, I just got 20. So there you go. So that is 20 when I multiply the downhill pieces. Okay. Well, now we go into step three from the notes that we just took. I'm now going to start down here at this spot, and I'm going to multiply uphill. So I'll start at six, and I'll go six times zero times one. I'll put that over here. <laughs> six times zero times one plus. Then I go two times one times one. Lovely. So two times one times one plus. One times four times two. Lovely. 1 times 4 times 2. I'll group this all together because that's all my uphill stuff. Boy, this is ugly. <laughs> Whatever. You got the idea. So now, when I do all this stuff, the uphill part, I'll group it down here. Now we're getting a little bit more organized, a little bit nicer. So 6 times 0 times 1 is just 0. Plus 2 times 1 times 1 is just 2. 1 times 4 times 2 is just 8. So when I add these together, the uphill piece of this determinant when I'm multiplying this stuff, the uphill parts when I combine them all together gives me a 10. So I'm almost done. The last part, if you remember, there is a difference between going downhill and going uphill. We must find what that difference is. So the difference is this. Subtract these two, subtract these two. Well, 20 minus 10, very simply, is just 10. And ladies and gentlemen, did you, oh did you, oh did you, get the right answer. I don't know. We'll find out in class. 
We're going to practice these bad boys, obviously, in class. Three by three and two by two. And you're going to find out what we actually use determinants for, because I know what you're thinking. What are we ever going to use it for? <laughs> you're going to find out. There's many things that you can use determinants for. We're going to dab on a couple of those in class. We'll see you there. Later.